Right. Yeah. Um, Mary, we have uh, another 35 minutes for the audience. So how if we give this to Sufism scholars? We have Professor A.R. here. We have Donna. Hi, Donna. Aktif. Uh, apa kabar? So, Donna, please share the forum with you. Go ahead. Good evening, Prof. Clapport. How are you? And yeah, how are you, Mari, my, my good sister? And uh, Mr. Gunnar, thank you so much for uh, sparing the time for me. Uh, I for once, uh, Mr. Gunnar shared to my audience, Maha Indonesia, last year uh, during pandemic, Professor Clapport. First question is, what do you think about that? Uh, about banning about, we, uh, we believe about Sufism. That's my second question. So how Islam itself facing the modernization uh, ahead and how uh, we keep the principle of Islam uh, facing uh, West civilization. So how we deal with of it. Thank you so much. That's my uh, question. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Sister yeah. Mary. In, in reality, we are, we are not able to ban anything. We can put rules, but we are we do not have any control of what somebody th thinks, what somebody believes, and what somebody feels. If nobody really has a control over how we feel, how we can think, that is our point of freedom. Mm. And that is not possible for any one entity or, or, or any one concept to ban what we feel and what we think. And therefore the rest is actually not relevant. So I can say, please, nobody think about this, but it's only me talking to myself really, right? And we are all, like it or not, free to think what we think, to feel what we feel and experience what we experience. The political side, I, I, I've never had an interest. In. You, you know, I think, I think uh, Islam, philosophy, religion, it is for you, for me. It is for us to get to know who we are. It is not something that we can. I very much believe in. In what I live and what I experience. But I also know that I can share it, but I have no, A, I have no desire to impose it upon anybody. And I also know that I have no power to impose it upon anybody, nor does anybody else. Our beliefs, our feelings are our own. They are sacred to us. So the only thing of importance is what and how we observe, right? And, and not the political side of it. As to the second part, you, you know, one of the uh, one of the core principles of Islam is what we call the Sunnatullah, right? So the Sunnatullah, in in English terms, is the system of Allah, the system of existence. Right, so there is a system to existence. There's a system of creation. There's a, there's a a frequency to existence. We all emit frequencies. The Earth emits a frequency. The Moon emits a frequency. All of these frequencies interact with one another, and they reverberate new frequencies. This is the system of Allah. In Islamic terms, can any of these different viewpoints make a change to that system? No. That system is. It is what it is. It is only incumbent on us to try and understand and observe it. And we we can be we can be born into one religion or another or into one belief or another. We can have one viewpoint or another, 
And we all, if there's 8 billion people on this planet, we have 8 billion different opinions and different viewpoints and different approaches. And that is also a part of the system of Allah. There's not one singular pathway. So there's nothing wrong in any of these approaches. Whoever chooses to take whichever approach is, is their right. It is their belief. It is their programming. So we cannot say one thing is wrong and one thing is right. Now, to try and approach Islam or any religion from the same approach that was applied either 1400 years ago or 2000 years ago, of course, leads us into deviating away from the reality of that system. Because, because any knowledge has to be universal, has to be timeless. If there is a time and tradition associated to it, well, then, then it doesn't apply to this day, right? If you, are, if you are walking around with a long cloth and you are in the North Pole, you're not going to survive very long. You, you need a warm coat, right? So, so you need to apply a the knowledge of your day, the infrastructure of your day. Now, you, you know, we are sitting here talking about Sufism, talking about Islam, but we are talking about quantum physics. We are talking about the brain. Why? Because science allows us today to be able to read this information, to be able to read this knowledge and, 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 and cross-reference this information. Not doing so is our own loss. Then we will have a more shallow understanding of of what is meant. Maybe a hundred years from now, we're going to have extraordinarily new information. And what, what we are talking today is going to seem extremely outdated, hopefully. Right? And then we can talk about it in a different way. And I believe we should, because it will help us get closer to the reality. Shunning the knowledge of the day is closing us off. We are talking about a vast universal ex existence. Why make a little square and try and fit ourselves into that? That's a shame. So, so, uh, so uh, Donna, did uh, Gunter, uh, Gunnar answer your second questions? You, you can elaborate that, uh, Ibu Donna, about the Sharia. And why have to make a very small circle like that? It's up to each of us actually, that's the whole message.